Some of you have expressed um, a challenge in knowing how to approach writing the negative effects essay. So I thought it'd be helpful for me to create a video for you. So the essay that you're going to be generating is going to have several different components to it. One, it has to have an introduction, it needs to have three body paragraphs, and it needs to have a conclusion. So we'll start with the introduction. So an introduction is supposed to give background details to the subject you're discussing and then provide a thesis. A thesis is just your one sentence claim, the argument that you are making that the entire essay is going to defend. So in our case, our topic is what were some of the native of, negative effects of settlement by Europeans and white settlers in Washington state? So this is negative effects on the indigenous people. So you need to say your, as far as background goes, you want to lead up to why, why were there even issues in the first place? How did these two groups of people, how did whites and indigenous even interact in the first place? So by giving this, you know, when you watch a movie, if you see somebody in the middle of an ocean on a boat as the opening, you're like, well, how'd they get there? That's what this is for. We need to explain how, how the indigenous people got stuck in the middle of the ocean with like hopelessness, you know, as far as their future because of the, the white people. Okay, so background, Native white explorers first came to the Pacific in search of riches, resources, and land. Through these interactions, they got to know the indigenous people there, and all the trade started off really good. Both sides were benefiting because they were getting something new and exciting. But then things turned sour, okay? So explaining the why, and then your claim. So this is basically your one sentence statement directly answering the, the question, the writing prompt. Because we're gonna be talking about numerous reasons, the or numerous ways the Native Americans were harmed. You can even say there were uh, there were various ways the Native Americans were forever impacted harshly through their interactions with white society. Something along those lines. But you you're introducing that your focus is you're going to be explaining and defending how Native Americans were harmed, and that there's lots of ways. You could, if you have the three main ideas lined out, go ahead and write in your thesis, Native Americans were harmed through the loss of land, loss of culture, and um, population annihilation through their interactions with outside white people. Okay, so that would be a direct claim, and then everything in your essay goes to support this claim that you are making. Then we get to move on into the body. So the next thing is looking at the body. Before you start the body, you want to plan out what are the three most significant ways Native Americans were harmed that you want to describe and explain in your essay. So it could have been the land theft, the cultural annihilation, the disease, resource reduction. Maybe you had something else that stood out that I didn't list here, okay? So you pick your top three. And then each one of those items is going to be its own body paragraph. You start with the topic sentence. You're explaining which one of these you're going to be describing, okay? And then, every, and then your topic sentence always needs to tie back into your thesis, the claim that you're supporting. All right, so if we pick land theft, your topic sentence might be land theft was only one of the ways the indigenous culture was forever changed, period. Okay, there's my statement. So everything in this paragraph is going to describe, well, how is that true? How was land stolen and why did it matter? Okay, so land theft, the encroachment by white settlers and the treaties started off by Isaac Stevens all systematically worked at reducing the land that the Native Americans possessed and went to pushing them further and further away onto reservations. Okay, so that explains what happened. So um, 
you know, the, the white settlers looking for, for the resources that the land provided, the farming opportunities and whatnot, wanted to take the land that the Native Americans had been their, their an ancestral homeland, okay? So why does this matter? Why was this harmful to the Native Americans? So at the end of that, after you've explained how they stole the land, you said the loss of the heritage, the traditional lifestyle, the traditional lands, and connection to their families was one of the, you know, was, was detrimental and it worked to eradicate the Native American sense of self. You don't have to be so worried, but just overall, like, what was the big impact? Why did we care that the land was taken away? They, they were pushed into the middle of nowhere with the most terrible land and farming and growing opportunities ever. And they got ripped away from, you know, their burial grounds, their traditional hunting lands, all this stuff. It just all went to lessen the strength of the Native Americans, which then made them easier prey for white society. Okay, So again, you don't have to be so wordy, but explaining the connection. Why do we care about the land thing as far as explaining why the um, Native Americans were harmed? So you could do the same thing with the cultural annihilation. Um, the systematic wiping out of cultural indigenous heritage is a lasting mark still felt today. All right, and then explain how that happened. We had the educational boarding schools, um, the, uh, the destruction of anything that made people who, you know, Native Americans, the bringing in of Christianity and religion to strip away the spiritualism. Okay, why did it matter? It was one more way that the culture of the indigenous people was considered less than and tried to be stripped from the people and made them lose, try to lose their sense of self. Okay, so each, each one of these separate paragraph explaining, starting off with the topic and what it's, your statement about it, the details explaining what that meant, and then ending with the why it mattered. So three different times you're going to do that, three separate paragraphs. The conclusion is your final paragraph where you get to kind of wrap up all of the details that you've laid out there. What is the overall takeaway, lesson, thought you want your reader to understand when they're done with your essay? So in this case, it might be the, you know, the arrival of, you know, the first Europeans had unexpected results that would, would affect the Native Americans for the rest of their history. The effects of this first encounter are still being fought today and combated, okay? So you're, you're kind of letting the person know what big overall understanding you want them to have about what happened. So once you give that overall summary, um, you can then also do something called a call to action and or you can also reference the future. So call to action is what steps you want your reader to take or what changes, what action you want them to take after having taken in the information that you've given them. So you might say it is important that everybody today supports the restitution of Native American rights, sovereignty, um, and making up for the harm that was, was imparted to their culture unnecessarily. You can also then give a reference to the future, all right? Native American rights are being restored. They're gaining momentum as far as strengthening their culture and it will only continue to do so. So where do you see this going? You think they're only gonna get better. Maybe you think uh, it's gonna be a long, hard battle, uh, or they're probably only gonna get as far as they are now. So wh where do you see things going from here? Uh, and so this kind of gives this projection to the future that helps somebody feel like, all right, that leaves me thinking of what's to come and lets them reflect on all of the previous histories that they got to learn about. So, um, 
In this essay, some other tips. Do not say I in it. Even though you are writing it, you don't have to be in it. You can use words like we should or everyone should be aware or people need to. So these are your thoughts and what you believe, but you don't say I think we need to. Don't, don't put you in it. Um, that's not an academic skill. It's not an academic quality. Unless you are the topic of your essay, you aren't in it. Your thoughts are, but you phrase it in kind of a more general approach as far as who's saying it. Uh, the other thing, do not start this with in conclusion. If you're writing a proper essay, everybody knows the last paragraph is the conclusion. So don't tell me it's the conclusion. Same thing like in the introduction. Don't say, I believe the Native Americans. I know you believe it. It's your paper. So um, by putting in those little, those little things, it kind of diminishes the academic quality of your work. And we're trying to get you college ready or just fine tune your writing skills. So we want to make sure you're, you're uh, bumping it up to the next level. The other thing as far as formatting goes, make sure on your paper you are only indenting half an inch. I've seen some people when they write their papers, if this is the paper, the beginning of their paragraphs start here. It's only one half of an inch. That's the tab button on your keyboard. If it goes any farther than that, you need to be backspacing or adjusting your margin settings so that things don't get skewed. Um, if you're not 100% sure what it's supposed to look like, guess what? Type up MLA essays, examples, in Google and you'll be able to see what they look like and you want to format it. Oh, the other thing is don't forget your MLA citation. You got this information from Turning Point 16 When Worlds Collide from Contact to Conquest on Puget Sound. Do a proper MLA citation. Author, last name first, title in quotation marks, the name of the website. I believe it was a history link. Um, so history link, um, oh, I might have said that wrong. The article in quotation marks, then the history link or whoever, whatever the name of the website is in italics. So it's slanted. The date of publication, the URL link that takes you directly to the page, and then the date you accessed it. Okay? So... Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.